Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. That's where we're going at today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. How many believe the Bible in here? Amen. 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 Glory to his holy name. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to start reading here at verse 21 through verse 23. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Praise God. Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We thank you, Father, for the entrance of your word that you're in life. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Open up our understanding that we may understand the scriptures and lead us into life everlasting. By way of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was slain even before the foundation of the world. Praise God. Amen. Come on and give God a clap off here. Amen. And then we're coming out of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Now Jesus says something so profound in the text. He said not everyone that saith unto me Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that's scary right there because we know there's a lot of people that think that they are going to go to heaven when they die. Praise God. But I want you to understand something here. There's a lot of people that think that they are going to go to heaven when they die, but yet Jesus says something in the text. What did he say, Pastor Walker? This is what he said. He said, not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Then he tells you who's going to enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, but they that do the will of my Father. Praise God. Now, there's a lot of people that really don't understand what is the will of God. There's a lot of people today, amen, that say, well, if it's God's will, and I'm going to tell you something, there's some things that you can know whether it's God's will or not if you take time out to get in the book. Come on. Amen. There are things that I know is God's will because it is written.
Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you don't even do the things that I say. Now, let me share this with you all. If you're not doing what he said, then you're not in the will of God.
word of God. Look at that. What is God's will? That we do what he say. Come on, what is God's will? That we obey him. Hello, somebody. Come on, we need the testimony of our forefathers. What the Bible says, amen, how King Hezekiah did that which was right in the sight of God. So that must be our testimony. The same testimony that Enoch had before he was translated. He had this testimony that he pleased God. These were men that were in the will of God. And we'll never be in the will of God until we repent, turn from our sins, and enter into suffering with God. Into what Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 3. He said, oh, that I may know him. How many want to know him? And we talked about this yesterday. You can have a bunch of head knowledge of the Bible, but I don't testify that you know him. You may know of him. You may know some things about him. But by your wicked lifestyle, amen, you don't know him. Hello, somebody. By your apostle said, of his suffering. Look at that. Every true believer must enter into suffering with Christ. See, there's fellowship with him in that. Amen. Come on, we must identify with Christ. Come on. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Because what we got to understand, we have to get in the will of God. We have to get in the will of God or we will be disqualified from entering into the kingdom of heaven. You understand? Let's go on a little further over in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, praise God. Let's read that. 1 John chapter 2, I want to start here at verse 15. Listen to the apostle John as he speaks by the Holy Ghost to the church. And he tells the saints of God. He ain't talking to sinners. He's talking to the saints. The epistles were written to the church. Come on, it's God's love letter to the church. Come on. And he tells the saints of God, love not the world. his 
wife and have a side piece of chicken on the side. Come on, somebody. Women, you can't love your husband and have a sugar daddy, too. Come on, God ain't going to be your lover. You got a sugar daddy on the side. Come on, now. the Bible says to the children of Israel, in Jeremiah chapter 3, he said, he said, you have found another lover. Most men of the love of sheep that she is real found. They begin to worship the God of the heathens. Hello, somebody. So you can't love God. Amen. And love something else. Hello, somebody. You can't worship God and worship other gods. Hello, you can't love God and love the world too. You get what I'm telling you. You can't live a double life. Hallelujah. You can't be between two opinions. Amen. 
And this is why when a lot of people die and then they have funerals, they automatically put them in heaven. So in other words, what happens, the word of God is disregarded. Come on. The Bible says in Psalms 50, 17, have how they, they hate instructions and cast my words behind them. God's word ain't even considered. Are you listening to me? Come on. We play God on funeral day. Because now we judge people and put them right in heaven. And notice how every one of them go. They're going to be a Muslim and die in their sins. And they put them in heaven. Come on, they can be a homosexual and die. And they put them in heaven. They can be a drunkard, a pedophile. Come on, a liar. And they put them in heaven. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? And see, you can't let your emotions get in the way. Because it's your family member. And you say, I bet she married me. And you knew it was a no good. They rejected God. Rejected the world. despise the word of the Lord. And Proverbs 13, 13 says, Whoso despise the word, him will God destroy. Come on. Come on. I got some family members that died in their sin. And it hurt me to my heart. Come on. But I can feel good about it because I know I did everything to reach them. Come on. But yet it still hurts my heart that I know they died in their sins. That they rejected Jesus Christ. The only way into the kingdom of heaven. Are you listening to me? Now let me tell you something. You got some family members that have died. Glory to God. You shouldn't just feel hurt that they go. You ought to feel awfully bad that you ain't even really try to reach them. Because we got too many people. You know what they know? They ain't even trying to reach their family members. Because they're too busy trying to be friends with them. They want them to like them. They don't want them to cut them off. So you know they, they begin to soften up their belief system. They begin to dilute the faith in Christ just to have good friendship and relationship with their family members. But you ain't going to reach some people like that. Come on. You're not going to reach some people like that. Glory to God. And guess what? If they die in your sins, their blood is now on your hands. Come on now. If that what he said in Ezekiel, if, you, if the righteous don't run the wicked, that the wicked may turn from his wicked ways. Come on now. Their blood shall be on your hands if they die in their sins. Jesus. Come on. This is an apostate generation. You better hear me. Glory to God. How many know this is about the will of God? It's not about your will or my will. It's God's will. It's God's will that no man perish, but that all come to repentance. See, that's God's will. That shows you right there, God don't want nobody lost. He want everybody saved. Ain't that what the apostle Paul said to Bishop Timothy? He said, it's God's will that we all be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. See, that's God's will. But guess what? I got some out of news flash for you. Everybody don't want to be in God's will. So therefore, those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. There are some people in the church that were once saved, had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, moving in the gifts of the Spirit, prophesying, casting out devils, come on, interpreting tongues. Praise God. Do you not know a lot of them are going to be lost? Come on. Come on. They were saved at one time. God was using them. Are you getting me? But the Bible says in the text of Matthew chapter 7, let's read that here. In verse 22, many will say to me in that day, now listen to what Jesus said, that many, a 
amen, are going to say to him on the day of judgment. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Look at that. These were folks that were in the church. They had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues. They, they were moving in the gifts. Come on. How many know you can have the Holy Ghost and move in the gifts, but guess what? You need something to go with the gifts. What do I need, Pastor Walker? You need the fruit. Glorified body, and we be called up to meet the Lord in the air. 